I would tell them, well, Hindus claim that uh, Vishnu is God. Why don't you believe in that? It's basically the same thing. But it's not the uh, Bible. Exactly. But the Bible isn't special, just to be honest with you. Yes, it's a book from the ancient Near East. And there's a lot of wisdom in it. As a Muslim, I don't deny that. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, as Muslims, we have a special place for the Christian and Jewish people in our lives, and especially in the deen. But that does not mean it absolves them for using a book which is plainly corrupted. In the Quran, we find that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the full truth about Isa alayhi salam has been given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And anyone who disagrees with what the Quran teaches about Isa, they are from the corruptors and they are from the liars. And so we're not saying this to disparage anyone, but we do find that the Quran makes clear claims about the identity of Christ Jesus. And we as Muslims don't have to accept the Bible as an authority for us. Quite simply put, the Bible, whatever tradition you choose to follow, it is not consistent, it's not authentic, and it's not authoritative for us as Muslims. Have you ever wondered how Islam Islam views the credibility of the Bible? Well, you're not alone. It's a question that many have pondered over the years. In today's conversation, we'll delve into five main reasons why, according to Islam and the Quran, the Bible is not considered a credible source for Muslims. Firstly, Islam believes in the concept of tarif, which means alteration or corruption of the original texts. According to Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 79 in the Quran, then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, to traffic with it for a miserable price. This verse suggests that the original scriptures were altered, thus compromising their credibility. The second reason lies in the concept of nask or abrogation. The Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 106, states, We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth better than it or similar to it. This means that if there's a contradiction between the Bible and the Quran, the Quran's teachings supersede those of the Bible. Thirdly, the Quran asserts its completeness and the finality of its message. As per Surah Al-Anam, verse 38, and there is not a thing but with us are the treasures of it, and we do not send it down except in a known measure. This verse asserts that the Quran contains all necessary guidance, rendering other scriptures unnecessary. The fourth point is the belief in the finality of the prophethood of Muhammad. According to a hadith, Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said, I have been given superiority over the other prophets in six respects. I have been given words which are concise but comprehensive in meaning. I have been helped by terror in the hearts of enemies. Spoils have been made lawful to me. The earth has been made for me clean and a place of worship. I have been sent to all mankind, and the line of prophets is closed with me. This indicates that the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, as recorded in the Quran and Hadith, are the final and most authoritative source of guidance. Lastly, the Quran contains many instances where the narratives of the Bible are corrected or clarified. For example, in Surah Al-Imran, verse 59, the Quran states, Indeed, the example of Jesus to Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust. Then he said to him, Be, and he was. This verse contradicts the Bible's assertion of the divine sonship of Jesus, thus signaling to Muslims that the Bible may contain inaccuracies. In summary, the Quran and Hadith present several reasons why the Bible isn't considered a credible source for Muslims. These include the belief in the alteration of original texts, the principle of abrogation, the completeness and finality of the Quran's message, the finality of Prophet Muhammad's prophethood, and the Quran's corrections of biblical narratives. Understanding these reasons can help foster a more profound understanding of the Islamic perspective on religious scriptures. And remember, the pursuit of knowledge is a noble endeavor in Islam. So keep questioning, keep learning, and keep growing in your understanding of the world. Until next time, peace be upon you.